Hi everyone, uh, back for round four of this league. Currently 2-1. Um, obviously looking to extend that. So, looks like we are on the draw here. Against B Kid. Uh, name doesn't ring a bell. Um, Alright, uh, look, I'm going to keep this. We've got a Tone Armor effect, we got Core Spirit Dancer, we got Leyline, we got a Dried Arbor. Um... So yep, yeah, I think we can keep this. Can't always live in fear. Oh. <laughs> uh, we're sharing a chuckle here about the ley lines. Um. <laughs> Alright, let's lead on Windswept Teeth. We got the second core Spirit Dancer. I'm probably just going for Temple Garden. <laughs> Damn mosquito, get away from me. Alright. So Stony Silence. This looks like it could be a pillow fort deck which is tuned uh, to deal with the Uros that are running about and the Arkham Astrolabes. Hopefully... Alright, well he's gonna bounce up here. A bit frustrating. Yep. Alright, we did draw a land though, so that's good. I'll lead on an Ethereal Armor. No, I'll lead on a Spider Umbra. Alright, we got another Core Spirit Dancer. I mean, like, we're in really good shape here as long as we don't just get locked out by enchantments. Gideon's Intervention enters the battlefield, choose a card name, your opponent can't cast spells uh, with the chosen name, prevent all damage that would be dealt to you and permanents you control by sources with that name. Well, that changes things a fair bit, we need to find a boggle now. <clears throat> Alright, well, can we cast this or not? Can't cast spells with the chosen name. Alright, I guess we are just... Uh, cycling on this one core spirit dancer. Alright, we found a boggle. Or a scout, rather. Uh, I guess I can try attacking Teferi, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't deal damage. It says you or permanence you control. Yeah, so that's not going to deal any damage. Shame, because we, uh, we're going to smack him for a lot here. Uh-uh. <clears throat> Still, we've got two auras in hand. We can start loading up on the Glade Cover Scout. And we get to draw cards while we're doing that. So, still a lot to play for. Hopefully, no Supreme Verdict this turn. Six white. That seems okay. Elsbeth. We'll keep the Core Spirit Dancer because it's a destroy effect. Alright, great aura, Nancy. His hand's almost empty, he's only got two cards left in it. Yikes, uh, safety spear's an issue. Hmm. Alright, let's get our Totem Armor on Glade Cover Scout happening. We've drawn land, which is nice. Ethereal Armor. Right, we'll cast the Rancor. We might be able to just one-shot our opponent here. We didn't draw another land, so playing Raids of Urge to pick it here is better than playing Temple Garden. Um... Hey, well that's protecting the Teferi as well. I 
Yes, he's copying his greater Oromancy. No, he's saving his spear. Okay, yeah, that makes more sense than the former. Uh, I think my opponent's got us here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So we need to act, pay 12 mana. Uh, <laughs> yikes. No attacks for us. Uh, probably Ethereal Armor here. Or Core Spirit Dancer, that's probably better again. Our opponent knows their deck better than we know their deck, don't they? Um, okay, so we can get Grispin from the Grave. Which is pretty good. We might not want to uh, cast this Umbra here because if we cast it, we're opening ourselves up to a detention sphere. I mean, I don't think we're realistically winning this one without Core Spirit Dancer because we need to hit 12 mana and we're currently at 6 once we play the. No, 7 once we play the one in our hand. Although now it's not 12, it's 14 because he played Detention Sphere. I just. We're not winning it, right? <laughs> Uh, I'll concede soon. Maybe I'll see something else from his deck. Right. Messenger is going crazy. I'll just mute that. Hmm. Interesting. Right. I'm just. I'm just going to concede here. There's. Too, too far gone um, to get that one. So we want Ley Lines out. We want to bring in our Enchantment Destruction, which is Force of Vigor and Dramoka's Command. Uh, also, Gadok Teague might be good too. Suppression Field seems a bit narrow. Uh, Rest in Peace does nothing. Alright, so what's not important? Grisburn is not that important. Totem Armor is important. Um, Vigilance isn't very important, but the Reoccursion is nice and probably better than the Reoccursion from Grispoon, so... Um, might just minus a, two cores and another Grispoon. Like, just Gadoctig is just so good, right? Stops him from casting a whole bunch of his auras. All right, let's do that. Probably one aura lighter than I should be. I just don't want my creatures that I'm attacking with getting bounced, so I want to use my um my scout for that. All right, we'll keep this. It's got what we need, which is a creature and well, two hate pieces, so that's nice. And the creature is a good clock too. Temple of Enlightenment, let's see if he tops or bottoms, and he puts it on the bottom. We draw Ethereal Armor, so that's good. We're going to get a nice clock started here. Well, there's Rune Halo. Uh, opponent doesn't like us having fun at all, do they? <clears throat> We draw land next turn, casting Ethereal Armor now is better, but he might just Teferi this turn, so I think we want to hold off on that, at least for one turn. Draw library for a basic playing card. Fender, you gain two life. Okay. We drew, do draw land, so that's really nice. Uh, we can't cast Force because we cast Gadok Teague, okay. I got myself again with that. Um, let's put the Ethereal Armor on Gadok Teague, and we can attack, uh, 
one of them's not going to deal damage, but we can get him for five, which is something. Second round Halo. Uh, that's annoying. Well, yeah, he's got um, protection from that. Hey, so now we're going in on core this dry double. At least that enchantment sacrificed. Looks like Gadok Tig is going to disappear here. Slippery Boggle's not bad. Uh, so we just pass here and look to hardcast Force of Vigor to get rid of his wall and his greater Oromancy. Or we can get our own Rancor and deploy that onto a different creature. Like this Slippery Boggle we've got in hand. I think I like that better. Um... Get another Gadok Teagues. That's not too bad. I probably want to get Gadok Teague out this turn. Damn bug being super annoying. Um, let's go to the boggle. If we cycle this second horizon canopy, it switches off our double white also. Playing Gadok Teague switched off uh, our two Force of Vigor, which is still in the deck. But our, um, what do you call them? If he just minuses to bounce the Gadok Teague, we're fine. Okay, he's plussed, which is probably smart. Alright. I have a feeling like our life totals are going to be and we can just shock in a temple garden here. Uh, I'm then going to cycle this horizon canopy. We do draw a Dromoka's command. We can't attack yet though, because our opponent 
has got a million enchantments. Far out, of course he does. Uh, Teferi means we can only play uh, Dromoka's command at sorcery speed, which I didn't realise. So getting rid of a wall is going to be slightly better than um, putting a counter, or actually a fair bit better than putting a counter on core. Uh, I think I could have played a land that turn as well. That was bad. So core's bounced, which is fine, because we get rank or back anyway, and we can just continually draw. It's probably better that he does bounce it, to be honest, for us, because it just gives us an extra draw off our rank or. Well, now he can't cast it because he drew this stupid freaking card. So that's that's awesome. <laughs> Yikes! Pillow Fort has got the game. It is grindy and it is messing us up somewhat fierce. I just told my deck, uh, my opponent, his deck is OP. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I got a uh, pokey tongue face back. All right, What's this one do. Alright, he's gonna beat us down with a million birds. That's not Elspeth. Does that have rebound? F.A. <laughs> ah. Form of the dragon. I thought I six through. I, w I just want to let him kill me the honorable way. Copy enchant. He comes another form of dragon. And yeah, that's like we're just super dead. And then he can bounce something with his um <laughs> Alright, let's uh let's get doesn't even matter. We had the Gadok tag, but yeah. Oh yeah, birds. Uh well our opponent, um, might not be dead, but like safety sphere it means that we have to pay mana to attack. He's got Phyraxian unlife too. Holy crap, this is great. <laughs> Alright, that was thoroughly smacked. Holy cow. 
every time we uh, we did something, our opponent just had the answer to it every time. Every time, pardon me. Yeah, that was um. That was that was absolutely savage. Wow. Um. All right. So we've had uh, seventeen of twenty nine games, and that puts us at fifty eight point six. Alright, so 59. Uh, doesn't look like we're going to be able to get the 60% win rate. Maybe uh, on rounding up we might. Um, let me let me pull my calculator out again and go 18 of uh, 30. Alright, 18 of 30 is exactly 60% win rate. So if we win our next game uh, tomorrow, then we're going to... Um, have exactly 60% win rate, which is what I sort of wanted for the deck through the boot camp phase. Of course, I'd like it to be higher, but I mean, realistically, I haven't played perfect. Um, there's room to get a couple of extra percent out of the deck. Uh, my build's no longer currently optimal, in my opinion, either. Um, and yeah, I, I want to switch it up and do something new. But yeah, hope you enjoyed it, enjoying the series, and we'll see you for the next one.